Hey guys, Tyler down here at Emerald City Guitars. So normally I'd pick a guitar and talk specifically about that, but today I'm going to do something a little bit different and talk about Fender custom colors in general. They seem to be a pretty misunderstood thing. I see people come into the shop every day and they'll look through all our vintage guitars and they'll come across a custom color and just be astonished by the price. I mean, how could you know a white Strat cost almost twice as much as a Sunburst one from the same year? Uh, it doesn't really make sense to a lot of people, especially because you can walk into any guitar store in America right now and buy any color Strat you want for the same price. But it wasn't always that way. In fact, throughout the 50s and 60s, the only two standard in-house finish options for Fender were Sunburst and Blonde. So every guitar you see that's a color other than that from that era was a custom color. So the earliest custom color Fender I've ever seen is a uh, 1951 Nocaster that Fender actually made for a guy named Oscar Moore, who was the guitar player in, uh, in Nat King Cole's trio back in the day a very famous jazz guitarist, and uh, a pretty good get for Fender as far as celebrity endorsements go. They made him this gorgeous white Nocaster, uh, all gold hardware, gold pickguard. It's really, it's something to behold. I think it's at the Songbird Guitar Museum in Chattanooga, Tennessee at the moment, but just a fantastic instrument. And in the early days of Fender, custom colors like that were extremely, extremely limited. Um, I've only heard of a handful and they almost always went to high profile music stars of the day or people who knew Leo personally. So custom color guitars from the early 50s are pretty uh, bordering on unheard of. So the first mention of custom colors in any sort of Fender literature happened in 1956 when it showed up in their catalog. It was mentioned pretty discreetly that uh, for a 5% upcharge, Fender would paint your guitar uh, any DuPont Duco color that you wanted, and Duco was just DuPont's uh, nitrocellulose lacquer brand of the time. So there was no standardized list of colors that you chose from. You basically picked from one of the thousands of Duco colors that were out there at the time and Fender would do it for you. So these custom color Fenders from the late 50s uh, are still very, very rare and not quite as rare as ones from the earlier 50s. So in 1960, Fender came out with the first standard a custom color chart, which was basically a list of 14 custom colors, uh, all of them except one being very popular General Motors colors. So they were cars that everyone every day saw on cars. The only one that wasn't a GM color uh, was Candy Apple Red, which was a Fender exclusive color, and they had it custom mixed for them. So when people think about Fender custom colors, these are the ones they think about, ones like Lake Placid Blue, like Fiesta Red, Olympic White, the really classic colors that we still love today. So the early to mid 1960s, really the heyday for Fender custom colors. Uh, they started to wane a little bit in popularity towards the later 60s, and by the early 70s, they were slowly phased out until I think in 1974, when basically the only options you had were like walnut, natural, blonde, really boring, earthy colors. So the thing about custom colors is that they were done on a case-to-case -case basis. They're very rare. So uh, the procedure by which they were finished was never really standardized. So we see a lot of really weird things. We'll see two guitars, uh, in many cases from the same year, the same color, that look totally different just because the process by which they were finished uh, was totally different. So some of these finishes were sprayed on with no top coat, uh, no clear coat on the top. Some were sprayed with no base coat. They just do color straight to the wood. Fender sometimes sprayed finishes over old, like defective sunburst bodies. That was a really common thing. I've even seen Fender custom colors that are sprayed over other Fender custom colors. Even in one case, I've seen a Fiesta Red Stratocaster that was Fiesta Red over Dakota Red over a white primer over Sunburst. So really on those custom colors, there were no rules and we see some pretty interesting stuff. Now that can make it really hard to authenticate or validate these finishes, but when you see enough of them, you start to get a feel for what's real and what isn't. And down here, we have definitely seen more than our fair share of them. So I could talk literally all day about the ins and outs of custom colors, different base coats, different top coats, sparkle finishes. There are literally hours and hours of just lectures uh, to be had on this subject. But for now, hopefully, uh, you have a better idea of what Fender custom colors are, uh, just why they're so cool and rare and awesome. So if you're interested in Fender custom colors, uh, as of this morning, we have 20 of them in the shop down here at Emerald City. So if you're in the neighborhood, swing by, check them out for yourself up close and personal. We'll see you next time.